Hi, my name is Steve Bowler, and in this video, uh, I'm going to be configuring uh, BGP Confederations, and I'm just going to be explaining a little of what they are and why you would use it. Um, in the example in the lab we have here going, uh, we have a um, customer router who's in Autonomous System 100, and then we have um, I, the uh, ISP that the customer is connected to, which is an uh, Autonomous System 200. And you can also see here we have uh, these other Autonomous Systems that we've assigned. And I'm going to talk to you a little about those Autonomous Systems. Uh, those autonomous systems there are private autonomous system numbers just like you have uh, public and private IP addresses you have you know um, public and private autonomous systems and they pretty much serve um, a the same purpose the public autonomous systems are you know routable and the private autonomous systems are stripped off once they leave the autonomous system that they are um, a member of. So these autonomous systems here, these 65, 534, 65, 535, and 65, 533, those are all sub-autonomous systems of uh, autonomous system 2. And these are the confederations within AS200. So to the outside world, if we were at, you know, uh, customer, the customer router, what we peer with is, we're going to peer with, we don't peer with these confederation, these sub-autonomous systems in ISP1. We actually peer with the uh, AS200. And the reason why you, you know, use confederations, say you got a, um, uh, usually they're found in very large uh, transit uh, autonomous systems like ISP networks, uh, and they're used in the same way as, you know, route reflectors are. They minimize the uh, number of IBGP peers that you have to have, and they do that by breaking the a, uh, autonomous system into sub-autonomous systems. So what we're going to do now is I've already done all of the IP addressing. We're just going to go and we're going to configure BGP and uh, see if we can get this up and running. So first we're going to get to the customer router and we're going to configure it for BGP 100 local AS. Under here we're going to, our neighbor command, we're going to appear with uh, ISP1 R1. We're going to appear with, and this time we're going to be appearing with the physical IP interface. Remote autonomous system, again, we're not going to put in the AS, the Confederation AS 65535. We're going to be putting in the AS of 200. That's what it looks like uh, to the outside. They don't see these subatomic systems. And I got to tell you that the private, the, you know, the private range of AS numbers is 64512 through 65535. Those are designated by the higher powers that be uh, as private autonomous system numbers. We're going to go ahead and put in our uh,
We're going to start up here on the top right. We're going to configure router 2 with BGP. Now, the way we do this is we can configure it uh, router BGP. Now, we're going to put in the sub autonomous system or a confederation. It's going to be 65534. And we have to put in the following command, BGP Confederation Identifier. And what this command does is it tells the router that it is a member of a confederation and the confederation ID, which in this case is 1200. I'm sorry, not 1200. In this case, our confederation ID is 200. And then the other important BGP confederation command that we need to put in here is the BGP Confederation Peers command. Basically, this is just telling it the router. This is just telling us which uh, member autonomous systems to which this router is connected to. Which we're only connected to one. We're only connected to uh, AS65535. So I'm going to list that as my peer. BGP Confederation here, 65535, which is router 1. We're on, we're currently on ISP 1 router 2. And I'm going to go ahead and put in my neighbor statement. I'm just going to peer to the physical interface IP, 192.168.1.0. I'm sorry, 1.1. Remote AS, <coughs> excuse me. I'm going to be typing 65535. And then I'm going to also put in my network statement here. advertising to the world. Okay, so now I'm going to go on to ISP 1 router 3. Down here in the bottom right, I'm going to save the uh, ISP1 router 1 that has the most configuration. I'm going to save that for last. 